Hi everyone, it's Ryan back here on the Syntax Byte, and in this video, we're gonna talk about using the new import from PDF feature, uh, part of the get and transform data uh, features in Microsoft Excel 365. Um, so this is a new feature, so you may not have this feature yet, but I'll show you how to check if you do, and then if you do, I'll show you how to use it uh, to both get data from a PDF on your computer, as well as from the web, and if it's from the web, automatically refresh that data, including pointing to a different uh, file if that need be the case. Um, so to start with, you're gonna wanna check if you have the feature available. So the easiest way to do it is just go to data, uh, get data from file and see if there's a PDF option. Uh, this is only for Excel 365. So if you have Office 2016, uh, it's not gonna work. If you have Office, I think there's a 2019 they made, uh, it's not gonna work. So this is only for Microsoft 365 uh, subscribers at this time. Now, if you don't see this, but you just wanna double check what version you're on and see if maybe there's an update available, what you can do is you can go over to File, uh, Account, and it will tell you the subscription product. You go to About Excel, uh, or you don't need to click it, it just says version right here. So ver I'm on version 2007. And that is the version that Microsoft claims to have added this feature in. Now, that being said, I had version 2006 installed and was using this feature just fine just prior to this video. So um, it may work on an earlier version, but if you're not seeing it there, make sure you're on version 2007 or later, which was released on July 30th, 2019. And that's where they officially added the Make a PDF Connection feature. Okay, so with that out of the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a PDF from the web um, into Microsoft Excel. Um, so what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the COVID-19 uh, epidemiologic, uh, hopefully I said that right, summaries from uh, Public Health Ontario. Uh, so this, uh, they release a daily PDF with all of the case information um, in the province of Ontario in Canada. Um, is showing how many COVID cases are released. So if I right click uh, this one, August 1st, 2020, it's a PDF that shows uh, changing cases, August 1. Uh, they have the last day for reference as well, 116 new cases, one new death, uh, and 122 results. So a net decrease in active cases, that's awesome. Um, and then they have a number of graphs. So it's a fairly uh, complex PDF. Um, so we'll see if we can get, probably we're just interested in uh, this number up here. Uh, the change in cases August 1. So we want to get that into Microsoft Excel. So to start with I'm going to copy the URL. Now if you put a file uh, on your hard drive or you know, SSD whatever your disk um, you're going to want to go to from file from PDF uh, and you would click that and then you would browse for the file. In my case I want to do a uh, from web. I don't even know where that is on here. Other sources from web. There we go. And Microsoft Excel will automatically detect that it's a PDF. Um, I'm gonna also do one more thing here while I'm going at it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click advanced. Um, I'm gonna paste that in there and I'm gonna isolate this date as a, as a separate part of the URL. So I'm gonna make it a three part thing. I'm gonna chop off this PDF and I'm gonna isolate this date. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do that later. Um, we're actually gonna see if we can change it uh, so that we have a cell in our sheet that allows us to specify the date and load the file from that particular date um, when we refresh the query. Um, so that's why I'm going to part that out to make that easier, but you wouldn't have to. Go ahead and click OK. It didn't ask me for an authentication here, but if it did, just go ahead and click Anonymous. Now it loads up different pages and different tables. It tries to figure out where tables are in the PDF. It's not very good at it, I find. It may get better in time. So if the table you want is here, you can do that. Um, I also have had issues refreshing the tables when using a different but strikingly similar file from a different day. So I think I'm gonna use a page here and see if that gives us a little bit better luck. You can see the pages often have lots of null responses in the columns, but they do capture all of the data. Um, so we want a summary of recent cases. This is the number we're kind of looking to pull out here is this 116. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just load it directly in, but you could do a quick transform data if you want to, um, and then you can do things, you know, merge columns, add columns, uh, that sort of thing. But I'm just gonna load it in kind of verbatim here. We knew a load too. Uh, by default, it wants to create a new new worksheet. I'm gonna let it just load it right into this one. Um, and we'll load it up as a table. Okay, perfect. So that's that. Um, that's our table. Now, that's great. What we want to do now is we want to accommodate data refreshing. So we want to be able to refresh this table. So how do we do that? Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go over to query and then you want to go to properties and make sure enable background refreshes uh, set. You can refresh it when opening the file and then you can refresh it every X number of minutes. Um, if it's a file stored on your PC, remember you'd actually have to update the file manually before you'd see any changes, but in this case I used a web. So this would work. So I'm going to go ahead and reset it to refresh every 60 and refresh when opening file. That's fine. However, and this is often the case when you're working with PDFs as opposed to working with uh, something like an HTML file that you might be a little bit more used to pulling in from the web as part of a query. They're never going to update this file. This file is as it is. They might delete the file, but they're never going to update the file. When they post tomorrow's summary, they're going to post it as August 3rd.pdf, right? Uh, they won't post uh, as August 2nd of PDF. Um, so we want to actually be able to modify our URL and import a different file in um, using the same steps that we told the query editor. In this case, we didn't open the query editor, but using the same steps, we want the same data from a different file. So what we can do is we can try changing the URL. Now I've had mixed results with this, but I'll show you how to do it. You can go, go ahead and give it a shot, see if it works in your case. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this sheet data. I'm gonna add a new sheet here. You could use a different spot on the same sheet, but I'm gonna call it params. I'm gonna type in as a header, I'm gonna say date. Okay, I'm gonna bold that. Here I'm gonna put the date. So this is 2020.08.02 was the date of that file. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to formulas and give it a name. So I'm going to define a name. I'm going to call it date. Oops. Uh, name manager. I want to edit that. Call it date. Close. Now, what we need to do is we need to make this itself a query. So it's going to be a um, query that just pulls the information from this cell. So we can do from table range because it's a named range. So that's why I had to add that name because otherwise it would make it into a table. I just didn't want it to be a table. I just wanted it to be that particular cell. So I had to give it a name. Uh, it's figured out that we're a time and date here. So I wanna do some changes because I need it to be text in order to put it in the URL. You can't just add a time or a date into the URL. So what I wanna do is I wanna change it to be a date I want to replace current, so that gives me just the date. Then I want to change it to be a text, and I want to add new step. So it's a date, but then it ends up being a text. And I want to go drill down, and that just makes it so it just returns that. Now I want to close and load too, um, and I just want this to be only create connection, because that's going to be used by this. So now I want to go to edit on this one. I want to go to advanced editor and where we have this date portion, I wanna see if we can add that. So we're gonna say date. We're gonna say done. Um, okay, it seems to be happy. Let's go ahead and refresh preview. Okay, so mine is happy. If yours gives a privacy warning, what you wanna do is you wanna go file, options and settings, uh, query options, I think. Bear with me privacy and change it to where I have always ignore privacy level settings. Otherwise it might not let you proceed with using that date as a parameter. So um, that that is required if you're, if you're gonna do the, do the parameter and it's giving you an error about privacy. Um, 
So that is how you do that. Okay, so now with that being said, we can do a close and load. And then we can try and go and change our name. So we have cases July 31, cases August 31, 124, 116. Let's see what we can get done here. Let's change it to August 1st. And then you have to go back here and you have to go refresh and see what happens. Okay, so it loaded a little bit weirdly, but we got changes in July 31. We could see that this obviously would have been July 30th, but it doesn't really mention that. Um, so you can see it's a little bit finicky in terms of how it loads the stuff in. Um, and you can see that the table changed. So what happened when I tried to use a table before, um, there's no need to show you guys this obviously, but it basically just said that the table didn't exist in the new document, which I knew was a little hokey. Um, because the table definitely does exist. They, they were day by day, like I, I've looked at them, that they do exist. Um, but using the pages seems to be a potential way to get around that, but it did kind of change how our data is displayed here a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit finicky, but it's a new feature. Um, so that's how you go ahead and use it. Set it to automatically refresh, and if you have a case where you know the PDF itself isn't gonna change, but there's a very similar PDF at another URL that will, uh, then it can show you how to do that. And we actually have an error here. Okay, yeah, it does it, it like it doesn't know what to do um, in, in terms of reordering the columns, but it did it did change. I'm just going to describe that. It did change this data here. Um, so it just gets confused. But anyway, guys, it's been Ryan on the syntax bite. Hope you found that helpful. Um, it's a new feature, maybe you'll use it, maybe it's you know not really that useful just given how finicky it is and how difficult it is to um, use with very similar PDF files. But um, if you only need to import data once, it's fine. Um, so that's the feature, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Give it a like if it helped you out, subscribe for more on the channel, maybe I'll do a video in the future um, on other ways to get PDF data into Excel, uh, and I will catch you in the next video.